coming from three places. Open your Bibles to Jeremiah 23. Praise God. Adulterers, faithless, promiscuous idolaters, adulterers. 
adulterers. There are what to the land? Okay, go ahead. The land's a wasteland. Their unfaithfulness is turning the country into a cesspool. Come on, their unfaithfulness is turning the country into a cesspool. Can you imagine? God is talking about people that are bearing his name. And as I said, this is not just a message for leaders. This is sheep too. If you out here in the congregation and you called and God has called you and chosen you for a work, he's talking about you too. Praise God. Prophets and priests devoted to discretion. Desecration. Desecration. They have nothing to do with me as their God. He says they have nothing to do with me. My very own temple, mind you, mud spattered with their crimes. God's decree. But they won't get by with it. They'll find themselves on a slippery slope, careening into the darkness somersaulting into the pitch black dark. I'll make them pay for their crimes. It will be the year of doom. God's victory. He said it will be a year of doom. I've been asking God a lot of questions about what's going to happen just with this year alone. Because I don't want to get ahead of myself. And Oh, 
cultural. Praise God. And never giving it a, a second thought. Come on, and never second guessing if they should or should not. They're as bad as those wretches in old Saddam. Saddam? Saddam. The degenerates of old Gomorrah. Come on, God is saying that these people are coming down from the lineage of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what's funny? You don't hear about homosexuality preached as much anymore. Why? Because the church has allowed the LGBT to bully them. Come on now, they're the new bullies. You can't even say I, I disagree with your sexuality because my Bible says so. My Bible says so. No, you're going to be locked up. But how many of you know that you got to prepare for that? See, most of the what's happening right now in ministry is not preparing us for that. They're not preparing us that if we disagree with somebody's sexuality or their preference, that we're going to be locked up, that we're going to be persecuted. But the people that really love God and really know his word, they're the ones that's going to be tested. Because you ain't going to be just mouth action. So again, this is not saying, this is not saying, oh, we hate homosexuals. This is not saying that. What it's saying is that we have enough, enough, we have enough love in us to minister to them, but not sit there and accept anything. Because you're not going to put your lifestyle on me. I know the word of God, and I know what it says, and I know how it says to live. But I do love you. And I'm praying for you. But now it's okay. Now, don't preach about it. I had someone come into my office and they know that I'm saying that they ask me, how do I feel about homosexuality? And right when he said it, the Lord said, prepare, because these are going to be coming to the believers. Whether you're preaching this gospel or not. And I said to him, I don't agree with the lifestyle because my religion, what I believe in, it doesn't stand for it. Yes. And he said, well, why? Because he's, he's gay. And I said, one thing I can tell you is that it brings no multiplication of life. And had it not said that, and had it not been scientifically proven that it cannot, I probably would have second guessed it. But because the Bible says it cannot bring life, it stops life. That means it's against the order of God, the natural and spiritual order. Now, I didn't come so aggressive, so don't be, you know, I didn't come so aggressive. Notice that when the Lord has you speaking to a sinner, you're not giving them the hammer like you, like you would a believer. Why? Yeah. Wow. Because we ought to know better. Yes. And he said, but. You know, I felt this way from when I was born. And I said, I understand. Because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So you can't be born like that. To those that don't know how to minister and tell people, no, you ain't born like that. Well, you was born a liar. <laughs> how about that? Yeah. You was born to cheat and pimp out people's daughter. Sure. How about that? Sure. So let's stay in the word yeah. and we'll be okay when we're ministering. He said, I, from when I was a little boy, I knew that I liked boys. And I said, I understand. Because I was busting in wide open with a whole bunch of children. You understand? Yeah. And I'm not going to be censored. And I said to him, the reason why you're asking me if you can be truthfully honest in your heart is that you know what's wrong. Because somebody that has already accepted that it's right and that they're going to do what they want to do, it's not going to answer your opinion unless they're trying to put you on trial. But it was just me and him. Yes. Okay? And I said, the reason you're asking me is because somewhere inside my love, you know this one. And he said, Yes, I know scientifically it's wrong, but how do I get rid 
bad breath. Oh. Meaningless heat. <laughs> lies, 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 and more lies. They make it all up. Not a word they speak comes from me. Come on now. He said not one word, Mom. They speak comes from me. God says not one word. Not one word out of the message that you're bringing came from me. They preach their everything will turn out fine sermon. So don't hold on. Because don't we love those sermons? Come on, we love those sermons, Mama, that tell us that everything is going to be okay. And that all our bills are going to be paid. And that the house is on the way. And the car is on the way. And we're going higher in the spirit. And God is about to stir you up. We love those messages. They preach their everything will turn out fine sermon to congregations with no taste for God. Pause right there. But who does the message go to? And God allows it to go to the sheep that what? They ain't got no taste for God. They ain't got no taste for God. Those are the message. And if you notice, a lot of times they're packed right out. Because I don't really have a taste for God, you know? But I just want His benefits. I just want the goodness without the requirement.
trusting you. Oh God, the vision is bigger than me. God, my business is expanding, expanding. I thank you. Don't you know the devil has a part in that too? Come on. Mm -hmm. Isn't he not the same one that put Jesus on the pinnacle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is he not the same one that said, Mama, turn this stone into bread? Mm -hmm. oh God. If you think you're not. Yeah. 
excuses and I don't remember. And God, I got this to do. And God, I got that to do. And God, it's too much. They have been living convicted lives. Lives. Amen. Full of honor and reverence. Not coming out of their mouth sideways about God's people or his leaders. If they had gotten the right message. Am I not a God near at hand? God's decree. And not a God far off. Can anyone hide in a corner where I can't see him? God's decree. Am I not present everywhere? Whether seen or unseen. Praise the Lord. Come on, can you hide in a corner? No. Can we hide away from God? I can hide from you, Senator. You know, I can go in the corner and pick my little stuff real quick. But God can see me. But see, Amaya, God wants us to live in such a way that we know that he's present. So whatever I'm doing, I don't care if you don't see it or you don't see it. I know God sees it. That means if you do happen to see me, I'm in the right because I'm living a life of conviction. Come on, I'm not walking out of church and cutting my peace on the side with nobody. I'm not sitting up here telling you to remain married while I'm out there swinging adulterous visions and all this other stuff. Come on, I'm not telling you to be somebody of integrity. Learn how to get your affairs in order when I'm full of excuses and get mad at you because you're full of it. Go ahead. I know what they're saying, all these prophets who preach lies using me as their text. Come on, I know what they're saying. All these prophets who preach lies, using who as their text? Come on, do it for the culture. United we stand, divided we fall. One nation under God.
that's causing disruption. He said, keep that to yourself. What does straw have in common with wheat? Nothing else is like God's decree. Isn't my message like fire, God's decree? Isn't it like a sledgehammer? Come on, he said, isn't my message like fire? Is it not like a sledgehammer? No, but we want the message that's going to make you jump up and down, flip, shout, and reach for the stars. But he said, my true message is like fire, and it's like a sledgehammer. Why? Because everything that will burn up out of you that's not like God, and every thought process you have, that's been knocked down. No, but you want the meek and gentle. Yes, Jesus is meek and gentle. Not too gentle, Jesus, meek and mind. Yes, he is. To those that are obeying him. But you ever realize the only one that is telling you to brush your teeth in the morning? Has anybody ever left the house and forgot to brush your teeth? Nobody don't have to tell you to do that. Why? It's in habit. It's a part of you. But the leaders have to always tell you, make sure the house of God is in the way. Make sure you fix back the chairs and Come on, everybody, pick up your shoes. Come on, everybody, don't drink and eat in the sanctuary. Come on, everybody, pay your tithes. Come on, everybody, remember first. Come on, everybody, give your offering. Why? I don't like when I got to hear people tell me what to do, especially if I know. Hear what I'm saying? Especially if I know. Because you know what that shows me? I don't want to. But I want everything else from God. I've had it with the prophets who get all their sermons secondhand from each other. Come on, secondhand. I was in prayer one day, but Lord said, find the wolf path. Because that's what a lot of them, that's what's happening. They roll in packs and go and take the people of God's money. But we love it that way. Why? Because they're rich and they're famous.
We are so heavily bound in this Keisha while living such a deceptive life and a life that you don't want to change is refusing and rejecting good fruit. It hears messages and it flies in one ear and goes out the other when the word says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. So that lets me know it's two different hearings. There's two different hearings. There's a shallow and there's a deep. And so if I tell you, thou shalt not steal, Sister Jessica, and you hear the word, and you go outside, you, oh yes, I received it, and you go outside, and you take a pen from the bank with no conviction, that word ain't hit you, and it wasn't sold in you. I never sent these prophets, never authorized a single one of them, they do nothing for this people. Nothing. God's decree. And anyone, including prophets and priests, who ask, what's God got to say about all this? What's troubling him? Tell him you. What he said? So when the world is in turmoil, and the earthquakes keep happening in Puerto Rico, and the storms and stuff is hitting different islands, and the volcanoes are erupting, It's sickening. It's 
sickening to God. Because we want to be sensitive and offended when we want to be offended. But don't let us be the one that does the offending. A way of work so far. We don't like when the, 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 the script flip. See, some of us can dish it out. But we can't take it. We can't take it. But we say we believe. We say we're called. We say we're chosen. But don't you dare offend me and don't you dare come up in my corner. Because I'm ready to give you all this pressure. The message of the living God of the angel armies. You can ask the prophets, how did God answer you? What did he tell you? But don't pretend that you know all the answers yourselves and talk like you know it all. I'm telling you, quit the God told me this. Quit the what? God told me this. Quit the what? God told me this. God told me that. Quit the God told me this and the God told me that kind of talk. Stop it. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, stop it. Stop it. The word of the Lord is yeah and amen. And if you can't keep that word, stop it. Are you paying attention? You better because I'm about to take you in hand and throw you to the ground. You and this entire city that I gave to your ancestors. I've had it with a lot of you. You're never going to live this down. You're going down in history as a disgrace. Come on. I was watching a documentary the other day, and there was a young girl doing an interview in different nations. Do you know that America is like a disgrace in every other country? The country that was once for the brave is a disgrace. And we say yes, it's true, but we don't understand we live here. And God put us here to make impact and difference. No, we have to blend in. Go to Amos 5, verse 14 to 27. He said it would be like a disgrace. A disgrace. Come on, can you imagine, Mama, living all your life and doing, you're trying to do your best, right? Hear me, you're trying to do your best. And you get to the gates of heaven, Minister Keisha, and God tells you, depart from me. Come on, you worker of iniquity. Depart from me because I never knew you. Thank you for working for me and acting like you knew me, but I never knew you. 14. Seek good and not evil and live. You talk about God, the God of the angel armies, being your best friend. Come on, how much of us met some people? Thank you. Come on, let's see. Your relationship with God is just like. Come on, that you and God is best friends. Best for y'all BFFs. Ain't no other BFF. Right? Well, live like it, and maybe it will happen. Come on, he said, well, live like it. Come on, I can't be an intercessor. Going in the presence of God, possibly on your behalf, and as soon as I come out, a lie spit out my mouth, and I reverse the very And the prayers of the righteous are very much. 
when the hell began to break out, they want to blame the church. We didn't know you. We know nothing about you. Uh, and so I, so I, my family and the church couldn't even pray for me. Who did you call? Who did you call, sir? When he says, where two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing anything concerning me, I'm in the midst. Who did you call? And 
the Lord started to say, my people are not taking on my yoke. They have their yoke, and they're coming to me with their yoke, but they're not taking on my yoke. And then he said, this is the last days, and I'm rising up the spirit of the warners. I'm rising up the spirit of the warners, meaning, I don't know how many of you um, grew up in Jamaica, or I would say New York, because when that prayer went up, it's like the Lord took me back when I was like four or five years old, and I, remember, I was in Brooklyn with my mom, and she's walking, we're walking together, and there was a person on the corner, and they were just saying, repent, Jesus is coming, live right, get right. He said, I'm rising that spirit back up. We're going to begin to see it. God is talking about here in the last days. Come on, he said in the last days in the Old Testament and in the last days in the New Testament. He said, I'm rising up those people that's not worried about their looks and how people are going to receive them. They're just going to start saying it in the grocery stores, on their jobs. Come on, you got to repent. Jesus is coming. And they're going to say it as someone that's been waiting all their life. And old and, and no and, 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 and void. Do you know Jesus is coming? Yes, do you know too? Because you ain't got no passion in your heart when you're telling me. How am I supposed to be ignited? Woe to all who want God's judgment day. Why would you want to see God? Want him to come? When God comes, it will be bad news before this is the part that really convicted me. He said, woe to you who are longing to see the day and say, God, come on now. Because let me tell you, I say it a lot of times, God, you can just come. Because yep. I don't know if it's going to be two, three years later if I'm going to make it. Yep. Can you just put in your parents? It's a selfish problem. Yeah. He said, woe to all of you who want God's judgment day. It's a selfish prayer, right, Sister Stacy? Why would you want to see God come? When God comes, it will be bad news. Before what? He said it's going to look stink and nasty and wicked and evil and everything bad before it looks good. So we in an uh, era where everything like, okay, it's getting for the better. Everything is moving forward for the better. Come on, you gotta wake up. Because if you're really looking for God to come, you gotta know it gotta get bad before it get any good. Come on, it gotta get worse before it get better. He says, the worst of times, not the best of times. Here's what it's like. A man runs from a lion into the jaws of a bear. Come on, he said you're going to be running from one bad thing and end up in something worse. Because what? Your mind is telling you this right here. That's, that's, that's not it. That's not it. And end up in something worse than what you want. Worse than what you have. A woman goes home after a hard day's work and is raped by a neighbor. Come on, isn't it happening now? Yes. How many, how much violence in this world against women is it? Why? Because we are the carriers. And it's not only in Jamaica, it's not only in the US, this is a breakout. This is an epidemic against women. So while you're sitting here in your little pity party stage about what you got going on, because it's just the biggest in the world, there's some women that's chained up and locked up in bondage in someone's basement. Wishing to change places with you. Oh, the woe is me. Woe is me. I can't pay my bills. All my children acting up. Husband, wife, woe is me. 
When there's people in bondage and hiding. Don't even have the freedom like that's been put to live up the of Jesus. But you want to stay in bondage and act like you got the most problems in the world. Fix yourself and get your house in order. At God's coming, we face hard reality. Somebody say hard reality. Hard reality.